Okay, um, so here's an example, and I've, I've worked through some of the details already. Um, I'll confess this is because this is a retake. Um, I thought something was going wrong. I'll explain it in a second, uh, what we thought was going wrong, and then we'll, uh, and then we'll come back and, and we'll try to understand what's happening. Um, okay, so problem is to find the area under one arch of a cycloid, okay? So here are the parametric equations um, for the cycloid, right? The cycloid is this curve that's generated. If you take a circle and you mark a point and you start rolling the circle along the x-axis and you watch the path that's followed by this point, it's going to trace out a curve that, that does this, okay? Um, now, if we wanted the area of this region, right, area under the curve, if you like, we know that one way you can do that is simply, well, you integrate one, one with respect to area, right? Okay. Uh, the problem is if you wanted to set up that integral, how would you do it? Well, you'd have to, you know, I guess this setup, let's see. Uh, so we figure out x goes from 0 to, let's see, when t is equal to 2 pi, right? Um, so one arch of the cycloid, y comes back to 0 when t is equal to 2 pi. Um, and when t is equal to 2 pi, x is equal to 2 pi. So x would go from 0 to 2 pi. y would go from 0 to, well, you know, here's the trick, right? I'd have to figure out how to eliminate the parameter here, how to write y as a function of x. Um, that's very non-trivial, right? I mean, that's, that's close to being impossible. That's not something that's going to be easily done in this case, right? So writing y as a function of x, not going to happen. Um, so as simple as this looks, it turns out to not be very useful. So then we think about, okay, I have Green's theorem. Um, what are some ways that I can write 1? Well, 1, 1 is the x derivative of x, right? Um, it's the y derivative of y, so it's negative the y derivative of minus y, okay? And, and with those observations, you can plug things into Green's theorem. And you can get one of three choices for a line integral that is equivalent to the area you are interested in, okay? Um, okay, so that's, that's all well and good. Uh, so the, one of the tricks is, okay, so let's say you want to use Green's theorem to calculate an area. First thing you have to do is decide, okay, which of these three am I going to use? Well, probably what you do is you just start calculating. You say, okay, so I'm going to either y dx or x dy, or I'm going to add, you know, subtract them. So we do dx, here's dx, you multiply by y, gets us to here. All right, um, we do dy, so that, multiply by x, we get to here. And so now we look at it and we say, okay, maybe, maybe if we're lucky, when we subtract the two, right, when we do x dy minus y dx, maybe we subtract, things cancel out, they simplify, we're happy. Uh, the problem is that here you can see that this t that shows up in, in the x, right, that means that, and there's, and there's no counterpart over here. So even if I subtract, right, any, any integral I use that's going to involve x dy is going to at least require an integration by parts, which maybe I don't want to do. Um, so I might decide that I'm just going to work with y dx. So I say, okay, let's set up y dx. So integral from 0 to 2 pi, right, or, or really I guess I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Here's the thing. Um, I ha we haven't really talked about what c is yet. So we want to say 0 to 2 pi. Um, and I'll tell you why I got concerned. Is I'm going to say, okay, so it's the integral along c of y dx minus y times dx, and you get to here, right? And you're like, hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, that's a square. That's positive. Minus sign out front. That's going to be negative. Area shouldn't be negative. So what am I doing wrong? Is the formula wrong? No, it looks okay. Formula seems okay, but area can't be negative. What's the problem? Well, the problem is I've, I haven't identified C, right? Uh, what I've got here, right, integral from 0 to 2 pi of y dx doing this, uh, what I've got is the integral of y times dx along the curve going from here to here, okay? That's what I have. But that's not the boundary of D. What's the boundary of D? So, so let's say that this is C, okay? Okay. 
So the boundary of D, positively oriented boundary, goes like this, right? And it includes the x-axis, and it goes the wrong way along C. Okay, so let me call this C prime. It's C prime minus C, okay? Now, that saves us, right? Because, first of all, the integral along C prime, y is zero there. y is zero. So it doesn't contribute to the integral. Only this part does, okay? Um, so that's good. That means that the area we want, the area we want isn't this integral along C. The area we want is the negative of that integral because we want to go the wrong way around C. So it's the negative of that. So those two negatives cancel. Give me a positive. All right. And now I'm all set because what I have is the integral from 0 to 2 pi. If I multiply all that out, 1 minus 2 cos t plus cos squared t dt. And now we remember that cos squared t, I can write that as 1 half plus 1 half cos 2t, right? Um, 1 plus a half is 3 halves. Cos t integrates to sine t, I'm plugging in multiples of pi. Same thing with the cos 2t, right? This and this, they don't contribute to the integral because my bounds are places where the antiderivatives are zero. So all I gotta worry about is the one plus a half, that's three halves. Three halves times two pi gives me three pi for my answer. Okay, now we've got the area under the cycloid.